Hey there guys, and I've decided to put a little tutorial together for Magic the Gathering, sort of a basic tutorial. Because, you know, it is kind of hard to pick this up from the get-go in, obviously. So I'm going to put this at the front and I'll put the playlist in there. Uh, hopefully it will teach some people who are interested how to play, basically. So I'm going to play on Chandelier, even though I could have, could have went into the dueling software, but I uh, decided not to. So I will pick... Uh, red deck. So here's the five colors here, basically. So I'll first explain these colors. There's five types of colors. They're basically the type of your deck. You don't have to be only one color. You can be more than one. You can be all of them if you want to be. But it is kind of nice to balance them, and I'll get into why that is a little later. So red, red is kind of um, fast creatures and burn decks and I'll get into what burdens are in a second. I'll pick red um, in order to show this off. White is sort of healing, healing life. Life is your basically your total um, amount that you can take before you die so you, you heal. You know stuff like that. Protection. Uh, yeah and basically just creatures as well. Black is kind of the opposite of white so it kind of does damage deals life damage and decay but white and black are kind of similar green is all about the creatures and land it's kind of a, usually a slow building deck though it can be have fast creatures as well I'll get into what that means <laughs> later as well and blue is sort of counter magic like the Trixie stuff so I'm gonna pick red and the deck I get is not only going to be red I'm not really gonna save this save file but yeah so I'll go in here and look at our deck. So you see we have a two color deck. That's because I picked the second difficulty level, so we get two colors. So it's red and black. Now explaining this might take a while. So I'm probably want to, wanting to get into a match first, but a couple of things you need to take in consideration here. Up here is your land. This is four swamps and eleven mountains. Now, if you look at the top right there, you'll see this fire elemental. He costs three and two red to cast. Now, the three can be any magic. It could be anything. It could be this. See, th this thing basically generates blue mana. It could be blue mana to pay for that three colorless. But you must pay two red mana in order to cast this. So yeah. Everything is different. You know, this ball of lightning takes three red mana, so it's quite heavy on the mana there. Uh, the black creatures obviously will take swamps instead of mountains. So yeah, let's get in a fight and uh, see what's up. Buy a couple of that. Uh, I could buy stuff, but I am just demonstrating. So let's get a fight with this druid here. So first of all, there's a toying cost, or typically it's actually like a roll of the dice, but uh, apparently they do a toying cost here, but whatever. So he won the toss, and therefore he gets to pick whether he plays first or I play first. So unfortunately I lost. Now ante is the card you'll lose, but that's not really important. Basically your ante is the card you'll lose if you lose, and this card you'll win if you win, which isn't a fair trade off here, but whatever. So my opponent goes through his first turn. So I'm going to explain the turn. Right. If I go over it, it says you're in tap phase. Okay, guys. So I had to leave there and come back for a second. So on tap phase, if you go over it, it says you're in tap phase. So anything that you have tapped, and we'll get into that in a second as well. I'm going to be explaining a lot of things in the next few turns. But you're in tap phase. You untap everything that you need to untap. So yeah, that's pretty basic. Of course your opponent has the, the same phases as you, so yeah. So next is your upkeep phase, and there's certain cards that will want you to do stuff in upkeep. So this is basically a thing before you draw. So upkeep, you would do anything you wanted then, and obviously I marked this to always stop, but if you're playing the actual game with the actual cards, then you wouldn't have to do that. You would just, you know, do everything you needed to do step by step. Next is your draw phase, where you'll usually draw one card, but there are cards that will um, 
Oops, I accidentally clicked that. Um, nah, it doesn't really matter. See, it's saying I only draw one card here. So after you draw a card, you're now on your main phase, pre-combat. You have two main phases, one before combat and one after combat, where you can do pretty much anything you want from your hand. Now, to look at a card, you just scroll over it. Here's a swamp. I've got two lands. Now, lands are very important for casting spells, like I've already mentioned. Like, this unholy strength, if I played a swamp, I could play that. But, it's an enchant creature, and there are currently no creatures out at all, so I could not really cast that. Now, other things I haven't really went over is, your life total is down here. Their life total is up here. This is the graveyard where things go when they die. So, you, that normally you won't need to do anything with that unless you have stuff that brings cards back from the graveyard. Here is your mana pool. This will tell you when you uh, have mana stored. And you, you want to make sure you use mana because if you don't, you'll take mana burn damage. You don't actually take this in the newer, newer games. Um, the, well, the newer version of the game, but... Uh, back then, you used to take mana burn damage. The X at the bottom is colorless mana, if you're wondering. And obviously the other five are the different types of mana. So, let's see what we got here. We got some, we've got some. we got a creature here. I'll just uh, unexpand that. It's just a basically a big description. He costs one red mana to cast. This may be a good first turn play. Now, what's, what else we got? We got a two red mana. Casting creature. And the Bog Imp. We got a one, one colorless and one black. I'll probably play that next turn because I can play it with the Swamp and the Mountain. While as the gobl Goblin Polka Band, I, I, I need two mountains and I only have one so far. So I'm not sure I'll be able to play it. The Fire Element now is too high a cost. And the Blue Mana, mana Battery it costs four. And... Uh, it's basically just going to give me colorless mana. It, it, put, it puts a counter on it, and then you can remove counters, and you can put color. You'll basically take blue mana for it. Plus one. Right. So let's play a mountain. You just click on it in order to play it. So now I have one land, and you'll notice that this has become yellow. But you'll notice the swamp has become un-yellow. Un-yellow? Is that the right word to use? I don't know. Basically, you can only play one land per turn. Usually. You can only play one land per turn, usually. So I'm going to play this. Now you click on it, and it will say tap red mana. So I'll tap red mana. Now, this is what I was talking about, tapping stuff. Stuff will get you to tap. I think the go Goblin Poker Band, yeah, that little symbol there, that means you have to tap it. So that's what we'll un untap during the untap phase. Now, you'll notice this has a big swirly thing on it. It's because it has summoning sickness. A creature cannot usually attack on turn one. When they come into play, I mean. A creature cannot normally attack on the turn they've come into play. Unless they have a special modifier. Which I'll uh, go and explain later on. It's called haste, but I think it I think it does a big long description uh, in this game. So I'm going to click done. Now I skipped my combat phase because I could not um, could not do anything there. Declare combat, yeah. And then post combat, I can do any other stuff I wanted to if I was wanting to do stuff after combat. Now this is your discard phase. If I had more than seven cards in my hand, I would have to discard something. You cannot have more than seven cards in your hand unless a card states that you can have more. See, trying to explain this is rather hard because there's a lot of cards that have a, a lot of exceptions to them. Like, you can do this, but normally you can't. But, uh, yeah, I'm just going to try and explain to you what normally happens. And in the end, is your cleanup phase. And I don't actually know what it does there, but... I don't know what it does there. Um... I'm trying to think now. I think it's for stuff that would happen at the end of a turn, like at end of turn, destroy this creature, or something like that. So I'm pretty sure that would be what happens then. So he played an oasis, which doesn't actually give him um, any mana. 
but it does tap to prevent one damage to any creature. And remember, you can tap lands any time. You can use lands any time. So I got another thing that requires double mountains. Not great. And I'm class a swamp. Now, I, I'm torn between uh, getting a flyer out there and putting unholy strength. And I'm probably going to put unholy strength on this guy because he can attack this turn. And this gives plus two, plus one. Now, what the pluses mean, you'll notice my creature is... There we go. A 1-1. One, one. Now, the first number is the power. The second is the toughness. Basically, the power is how much damage it will deal. So, if I attacked him right now, it would deal 1 damage and bring him down to 5 life. If, um, if he had another creature out there, and uh, he blocked, you can block creatures, instead of uh, looking through for the life, he would uh, he would need one damage to kill this, but it would also do one damage to that creature. So that creature would probably want more than one toughness as well. Otherwise, they would both die. There's other exceptions as always, but yeah, that's basically the deal. So I'm going to cast on Holy Strength. Now this is an enchantment, so you got to click on a creature here. Now, you'll notice that it's jumped to 3-2, but the original card still says 1-1. One, one. That's because Unholy Strength gives plus 2, plus 1. So, yeah. So already this creature is looking pretty good for a first turn uh, creature. Now, enchantments can also be general enchantments, which basically just sit here at the side and do various things. But this one's an enchant creature. There's also enchant lands... And I don't know if there is any other enchantments now. I don't think so. I think it's just enchant creature, enchant land, and general enchantments. So I'll swing for three. And now he's down to three damage, and he couldn't block that. So you better hope he can play a creature next turn. <laughs> and he can. Figures. I'm going to play Swamp, and I'm going to play my Bog Imp. So I'll, I'll tap one mountain for that. Now, Borg Imp has flying, and you may have asked why it costs 2 to make a 1-1, one, one, because he has flying. You can see the little icon there as well. Basically, flying creatures cannot be blocked except by other flying creatures, or, creat or creatures that can block flying creatures. So basically, this is a free 1 hit every turn, unless he makes a flying creature or something to block it. Now, I don't want this to be over too soon, so I'm going to end my turn instead of killing him. <laughs> So now he's got a creature, which untaps the target land if he if he taps that. Now let's see here. I got a goblin balloon brigade. I'll keep that in my hand. It doesn't really matter. Right. Now I'm gonna attack with both creatures in order to show you. Now he's gonna have to block this one because if he doesn't, he's dead. And the, the AI knows that. He's dead unless he blocks us with his uh, druid there. So he's going to block it. And now, you see that was a 1-1. One, one. This guy has took one point of damage, you can see. He still has one point of damage until the cleanup phase, I believe. So if anything else did him one damage, this creature would die. But uh, he done three damage to this lay druid, and it only has one toughness, so it died. And the bog imp flew in for one point of damage because it's flying, and he could not block that. He's got a funky factory. Ah, oh, that's, quite, that's quite handy, actually. So this thing is a giant spider. It can block creatures with flying, and it's a 2-4. So it's actually relatively nasty. He also put out a mistress factory, and this is a, this is a ha handy card. It's, it's quite fun. Uh, it's not... Alright, oh, that's how I do it. <laughs> Basically, it can either tap for mana, or you can pay one, one colorless mana, and it can become a 2-2 creature. Or you can uh, tap it in order to make another Mistress Factory that become a creature, plus one, plus one, until end of turn. So I will draw, I will draw a mountain this time. Now, I probably, hmm. You don't, mountain walk. 
Yeah, it explains some of the abilities here, like Mountain Walk is, if Defending Player controls any mountains, this that creature is unblockable. So, if I, sw uh, if I swing for that creature into attack, and he has mountains, he cannot block it. It is unblockable, and therefore will always deal him damage. Um, so I'm going to play the artifacts. Now, artifacts are kind of like the the neutral thing. They don't require any mana of uh, any type. They're, they're colorless mana always. And uh, artifacts can be uh, various things. This one's kind of like an enchantment, but it's... It's, it's kind of weird. It's, I would call this an enchantment because it sits there and does stuff, but it doesn't really do that anything. It sits there and takes mana, you know. So yeah, that's just going to sit there in the right ha right hand side there. So I cannot. Uh, if I attack, one of my creatures is going to die. So I will not attack. And he's going to swing. I will take the two damage. And you'll notice that the attack phase actually has a lot of phases as well. Yeah, that's post combat, right? So yeah, basically you can choose attacker's phase. So he he chose the attacker. You you can put fast effects on the uh, thing. Like if he wanted to put uh, giant strength, basically giant strength is a thing that costs one green. I think it's one green and gives a creature plus three plus three until end of turn. And he can cast that, and then it will just hit through for three. Um, well, and an additional three. Unless I blocked it. Next is the choose blockers phase. I did not choose any blockers. But I would click on them and click to block that. Next is any fast effects I want to put on my blockers. Like I said, giant strength if I had it. Put on my creature. Made him bigger in order to kill that thing. Resolve first strike damage. Now first strike is sort of a damage that goes um, first. I don't have any creatures with first strike in this deck I think. And he doesn't either, so it's irrelevant right now. And then you would resolve normal damage. Just like that. Now he has a 4-4, four, four, and this is actually looking pretty bad for me. I probably should have killed him earlier. Now... I can actually make a fire elemental right now, because... The blue mana, right, I'll, I'll cast it. The blue mana, mana battery can uh, remove and it will add the amount of blue to your uh, mana pool equal to X plus 1. I don't have any counters on it right now, so it's just going to be 1. So there you go, there's a fire elemental. That's a little scarier for him. And since this is flying and he can't block with the boars, I'll swing in for 1. Now, the boars can kill the fire elemental and cut another one, really. But, uh, yeah. Which is why it might not be a good, so, such a good idea to go attack with that. Now, all I have in my, <laughs> my, my hand right now is creatures, really. But uh, I'm going to play the Dwarven Warriors, because they have a cool ability. I also play an Iron Goblin Balloon Brigade. Actually, I only have one. Which uh, can grant flying until end of turn. So he summoned an R an R creature, a three five. I told you green was kinda all about the creatures. So upkeep, draw, get an R mountain, play the mountain. Now this this creature that I brought in, I brought in for a specific reason. Target a creature with power two or less is unblockable this turn if he tap it. So tap abilities work like just regular abilities where you tap them. So like creature target creature with power less than three. So uh, yeah, power of two or less. So something with power of two or less. Since he's only on one life, I only need to deal one damage. So I'll put it on the bog imp. Now this is unblockable. So if I go and attack, even though he has creatures that can normally block this. He cannot block the ball the ball game this turn. So there, I showed you quite a lot there, but uh, hopefully you get get what I mean. Now I'm going to switch over to a white deck and try to explain things a little. Okay, I'm back with a white deck, and uh, our deck's a little different this time. 
it's gonna oh uh, I'll pay the gold for now I don't really I wanted to show the deck off first basically so uh, now you'll notice we have first strikers first strike a lot of white creatures have first strike actually <laughs> There's a lot of some black creatures do as well. But basically, first strike is if you had a 2 2 and you had white knight against it, and they, bo they both blocked each other, let's say, the white knight would kill the other creature before the other creature killed it because the other creature does not have first strike. If, if that makes any sense. Basically, first strike damage will always be resolved first. And then if the creature dies, it dies. And uh, if it doesn't, then they both deal damage. So let's say, uh, for example, a instead of a 2-2 two -two blocking this, it's a 3-3. Three -three. So the white knight would attack, the 3-3 three -three would block it, the knight would do 2 damage to it, but uh, would not kill it because it has 3 toughness. The th and then, after the first raid damage has been resolved, the 3-3 three -three would attack for 3, killing the white knight and pre preventing any advantage that the first strike did have. So yeah, I also have green in this deck. Uh, so I'll go and uh, fight someone in a quick duel. I'll do one more after this. I'll do it with uh, the... I haven't played black yet, have I? Yeah, I, I went... No, wait, I did have black that last deck, so what's the one I haven't went? I haven't went blue, so I'll play blue the next time. So I'll play a planes, and then we'll see what we have, because I never actually looked. we got a big creature here. So trample, this is an R, by the way. Trample means if a creature blocks this, and it has, let's say a 2-2 creature blocks this, you know, normally that would soak up all the damage, and it's a 9-9. But uh, with trample... All the, all the damage goes through. Like for example, like I said, a 2-2 two -two blocking this. It would take 2 damage, die, and then 7 damage, extra damage, would seep through to the player. So if it was right now, it would kill him. So trample is good, especially when the creature has a, the a creature? The opponent has a lot of blockers. Okay. What else we got here? We got a flying creature. Banding is kind of a weird thing. It's I'll explain it once we get it out. Because I, I will probably play that next turn. This is forest walk, so you, you'll see that it has uh, the walk suffix is on every single land. And the lands are forest, plains, mountain, swamp, and island. So, swamp, island, forest, mountain, Plains. Uh, the carnivorous plant is a 4-5 or five wall. Walls cannot attack. They are basically just defenders. But they usually have a lot of toughness. But I have nothing to play, so next turn. Looks like he has something to play. Savannah Lions. These, these are two ones. They're pretty good. I've been using them in the actual uh, campaign. So I'm going to make the Mega Mesa, Mesa Pegasus, which can fly and can bind. And he does not attack, because we could kill each other. And he makes another creature. And I will make Pikemen. Pikemen have first strike, which means if he attacked with something, I could block and kill it before it killed uh, the Pikemen. It can also bind, so. If the Pegasus attacked, the Pikemen could band onto the Pegasus and basically fly in for two. Which is an, another good strategy. But banding, I, I, it's kind of a weird ability. It's kind of old. I don't think they really use it too much anymore. Oh, I'm getting his planes here. So uh, I'm going to keep my Pikemen up and swing for one. Now, I can kill one of these, because first strike, see, my pikeman did not die. And I'm going to play Savannah Lines of my own. Run in for one again. I have no land anymore, and I have big creatures, but no land. So, this time, 
I'll go and band onto the onto the Pegasus. It's kind of weird, but since the pikemen do not fly, the the line the lines could block it. Oh, that's how you do it. You can wait. You can view the graveyard. Uh, I thought I, I I can't really. I don't really know an easy way to go through the graveyard. But oh well. Since the pikemen don't fly, it basically brings the Pegasus down. So the Savannah Lions could block it. Yeah, but the Pikemen still killed it because it still has first strike. I got one of these of my own. Cannot be blocked by creatures with power 3 or greater. You should know what that means by now. Yeah, and if you want to leave me any questions, then just uh, go ahead and do so. So I'm going to attack with the Pikemen and the Pegasus. And he's going to take two. I hope these are kind of educational if you were wanting to play. It is very tricky to get into this, and I suggest there's a certain uh, starter deck thing that you can get. It's called Portal. It might be a little old and a little expensive now, but it was quite good back in the day for learning, especially for me, because I didn't know what I was doing when I started off. So uh, let's make this Wall of Swords. Now, walls cannot attack. So, yeah. And I'll swing in for one. So I know he's on one life. I don't want to kill him just yet. Even though I probably could have that turn. So he's going to sword. Now, instants, and I haven't really got any yet. You can cast them at any time. And they're basically sort of spells and it kind of damn it oh no I want it back right okay well I'll tell you what sword to plowshares does and uh, maybe you can look back and see the actual decks but it's basically remove target creature from the game that means it doesn't go to your graveyard it goes straight out of the game like well it doesn't really display it here but uh, you basically put it aside and you wouldn't be able to even bring it back from the graveyard. And that that creature's controller gains the life equal to the total of that creature. My guy was a 1-1, one, one, so I gained one life. So instants are spells you can cast at any time and they're basically just tricky spells. Blue has a lot of them. Um, you can basically do in order to kind of be more tricksy with your decks. The, uh, now I have an enchantment holy armor here. I'm going to put that on my pikeman. can also cast white mana in order to get it plus zero plus one. So let's say I want to uh, give it plus zero plus two. So I'm going to have to tap two white mana, right? So I click, double click on it, tap two white mana, then click done. And it will activate. And uh, he's being more tricksy by disenchanting this which destroys an artifact or enchantment so he's going to destroy the armor before I before I do this which is kind of weird because it's not that important but yeah he destroyed it but it's still done the effect that it did you can see a plus zero plus zero plus two but it did die and it went to my graveyard now I We'll attack with this and it will block and kill both. So that is normal damage in how it works. I'm basically just toying with him at this point. We got another unicorn. Is there anything I would really like to show here? Yeah. The Colossus cast 9 mana to cast. It's a lot. Sarah Angel. Attacking does not cause it to tap. This is this is a really good card. It doesn't tap when you attack, so you can keep it as a blocker as well. Because tap creatures, you cannot you cannot block them. So this makes this card really nice. A few other cards have stuff like that. You'll notice I can't attack with the wall, but I will go and kill him. So uh, yeah, I'll be right back with a blue deck. Okay, I'm back and try to keep these videos short. And I've realised it probably went on for quite a while. So. This time I have a pure blue deck, it is only one colour. It has white and black mana batteries in it for some reason. Right, so let's go through these cards instead of going into a fight right away. So that 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 has a attacking does not cause
deposit to tap as well. It's a flyer. I believe there's a lot of flyers actually. Um, you cannot. I don't want to sell. <laughs> sea Serpent cannot attack unless defending player controls an island. So yeah. Protocol Sorcerer deals damage. Nerve Flyer. There's, here's a creature that taps to deal 2 damage to a target creature or player and 3 damage to itself, so it basically kills itself. It's not great actually. Here's a 1-1 one, one for 1 blue mana, just a simple one. This thing can regenerate. Regenerate basically means that if you pay that mana, when it's going to die, pay 3 blue mana and it will uh, not die, it will regenerate. So you can keep if you, as long as you have the mana to pay for this, you can keep regenerating this if it gets into trouble. A giant tortoise can be it basically is a one four when it's untapped. Sun, sunken city is sacrifice sunken city unless you play blue blue. And those aren't as good as the black and uh, white ones for some reason. You have to pay, you have an upkeep. So basically, at your upkeep, you would have to pay blue blue in order to keep this running. You can choose not to, and uh, bury it, but yeah. So there's an enchant land. Uh, power leak. Enchant enchantment. There's one I never thought about. At the beginning of the upkeep of enchanted enchantments controller, that, pair, that player may pay up to two. For each one mana less than two, he or she pays. Power leak deals one damage to him or her. So it basically does damage. Life tap. Against forests. Gaseous form prevents all damage. Yeah, okay. Sea, sea Bully is a rather tricky. Here's an enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice a sacrifice unless you play two. Okay. Ah, uh, there's there's one that can be quite annoying. For each one damage dealt to you. By enchanted creature, backfire deals one damage to that creature's controller. Now it doesn't actually have any counter spells in it. Basic counter spell will allow you to when a when a player casts a spell, you can play a counter spell and it will destroy that creature coming into play. Or it can be anything actually. It can be an enchantment. It can be a. I don't think it can be a land, but basically anything that can comes into play in the opponent's control. You basically just cast counter spell, and unless they have a counter spell of their own of some kind, then it fizzles out and it will grow to their graveyard. Unfortunately, I don't have any in this deck, so let's uh, let's play one more duel here. As I as I go around and uh, walk into cemeteries, apparently, and look for creatures. Mana crypt. What does that actually do? If you lose the flat mana crypt, I'll put that in just in case I get it. There's a creature. A blue creature as well. Unsummon's a nice one as well. Return target creature to owner's hand. So, one thing I haven't went over is sorceries. And sorceries are kind of like instants, but you can't play them all the time. You can only play uh, sorceries in your turn. While instants you can play in the opponent's turn as well. So they're a little, they're a little uh, more situational, but yeah. So I got one ones for one. When I say that, I mean one slash one for one mana. Wow. These cost zero to cast, so yeah. That's uh, that's something though. But I have energy flux here, which will uh, make him probably bury all them, so I'll play my falcon. Uh, if I attacked, he would just block with those, and uh, we would deal... I would deal one damage to him, not killing it, and he would do zero damage back, not killing it. Unless he has something funky. No, he has a falcon of his own. Or she. I think it was a she. <laughs> so I got a wall here that's not entirely useful. Since I got no artifacts and he's got three, let's play an energy flux. And there's the enchantment that just stays at the side there. So I'll pass the turn and see what he does. So he paid it for one. 
And he's got to sack the other two because he doesn't have enough land. So I'll go and play my Wall of Air. And he's going to keep paying that upkeep cost, apparently. So I'm going to play my War Elemental, which is a 5 4 pretty big creature. He wants to keep playing that. So I got a bunch of islands now. When you're playing uh, decks with only one cover, it's pretty common. So now he's going to unsummon this, bringing it back to my hand. So I'm going to have to play again, which is annoying. <laughs> but I'm going to attack with the Falcon and the Merfolk. And he's going to block the. So Falcon trade. <laughs> you know, I always got confused by that art before. But uh, yeah, I know what he's doing now. So I'll play our Falcon. I'll wait until he brings a creature out. So I can play Gaseous Form. He's discarding, wow. Uh, there's no enchantment I can put out, even if he doesn't have any forests. Right, there's a falcon. So I can play Gaseous Form here. Enchant your creature neither deals nor receives combat damage. So if I play that on that, and I attack with just my water elemental, he'll block it, and uh, he won't deal. Or receive damage. So basically, there's no point of that attacking now. Tiny elemental can be rather annoying if you look at it there. But it ha if it blocks, um, I forgot this is an artifact here. So I, I I'm going to pay the upkeep cost for that, even though I really don't need it. But just to show you, that's how upkeep works. For each one damage dealt to you by enchanted creature, backfire deals one damage to that enchanted creature's controller. Right. I'm gonna attack all three. Because he's blocking with this, it's gonna deal five damage to him and, bur and be buried at the end of combat. So that's the yeah being stupid because I could only deal two damage to him and then he would be on one life. I mean, he's probably still not going to win, but he's going to die from this time elemental anyway, so yeah. So, yeah. So, I hope this, uh... I got these two. They're pretty good. Um, think the magical hack is rather tricksy. I'll just show that before I go. Change the text. So, example, you can, you know, it can change the text of a card, like Swamp Walk to Planeswalk and stuff like that. It's a little more tricky, but, uh, yeah. So I hope this, uh, hope this uh, taught you at least a little about how to play it. Yeah, I know it's kind of hard to explain because, you know, this is an entire game and there's a lot more abilities and such like that um, later on. But uh, these are just the old cards, and you know it was kind of tricky getting into it at first, but I kind of understand it now. So yeah, so I hope this uh, helped you how to uh, play a little bit, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna put this at the start of the playlist as sort of a basic tutorial. So see you guys.